Hi guys, thanks for tuning back in. Today I'm going to be photographing the space station flying in front of the sun. It's an image that I've actually captured several times before, the space station flying in front of the sun and in front of the moon. And each time I thought I need to get it a little bit better. And today is one of those rare passes. When I say rare, the space station doesn't always pass in front of the sun from your point on the earth it has to be you have to be at a particular point at a particular time for an observation to occur and luckily this morning that occurs for me here in south shields at 10 47 10 47 a.m and i think it's 38 seconds and that's important because it'll take the space station this morning less than a full second for to cross the sun so i've only got milliseconds for to play with here now you can see behind me the, the skies aren't the best there are breaks in the cloud which is excellent and it's due to clear very shortly so i'm hoping that the clouds clear just enough at the right time for us to get those images now here i've got the celestron six inch uh, telescope what i've got uh, what I bought a number of years ago. Um, it's probably the best, the best telescope that I've ever had. It's an automated scope, so you put in your date, your time, uh, and using different settings, you can calculate your own location on the planet, or it can do it for you. And what I'll be doing in just a few moments is aligning the telescope to the sun. As you can see on the front, I've got a solar filter a uh, specialised solar filter for to block out the majority of the sun's light. Obviously, if I point that at the sun and look through the eyepiece, I'm going to be blind very, very quickly. So that's why we use solar filters. And that is uh, an Orion sol solar filter from Orion Telescopes. I haven't been paid for to do for to do this, mind. They haven't paid us for to kind of advertise their product, but it is it is uh, amazing. So is the Celestron 6SE. Um, I've also got a uh, tatty old uh, bit of solar paper here and what I use this for is uh, putting in front of the finder scope so when I'm trying to locate the sun I'll hold Whoop. nearly lost the telescope there man interesting nerve wracking that would have been uh, canny for YouTube, wouldn't it? Breaking the telescope. Right, I put that in front of the finder scope. Uh, aim, aim it towards the sun. Look through the finder scope, through the solar paper, and align it through the telescope. Again, I don't want to damage my eyesight, so that's why I use the solar filter. My camera goes on the end here. So I take away the, the eyepiece here. Take with the eyepiece and what I'll do is I will use this which is a Barlow lens and there's the sun coming out perfect good timing a Barlow lens here at the bottom and this part at the top is a T adapter a T2 FX which fits on my Fujifilm camera obviously it'll be different for different cameras so really that just slots in the camera goes on the end and that's how I take the pictures. I've just actually upgraded to the Fuji X-T5 and that's a stunning camera already. I've only had it a number of days and it's just beautiful. So anyways, I'm distracting. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, the sun's coming out just in time. I've got what, about 15 minutes for the, for the pass of the, the space station. I've got my laptop set up here, which will, uh, which I'll go on to atomic internet time. And that's important because you want the most accurate time possible, even though you might have a smartphone or uh, an Apple watch or something, it could be out by seconds or milliseconds. And that's just enough for you to lose and not be able to photograph the space station going by. So go on Google, type in atomic internet time, have that ready and that, that's what I've got here, all ready and waiting. And that'll give you the exact time. And basically, you, you just set your camera away 
when a space station is due to fly by. You've got loads of variables that you've got to wait for. I mean, the clouds that you wish and the weather, uh, your location, all of that. Things can go wrong, but I'm well set here. I've got everything planned and ready. And hopefully in the next 15 minutes or so, I'll have that, have that image. Okay, so let's see how it goes. Okay guys, it's just a few seconds, a few minutes before the space station passes in front of the sun. Um, I'm ready and waiting. I've got uh, the camera all set up and primed. I've got the solar filter on the front. Um, the clouds are breaking lovely. Um, it's focused on the sun here and the clouds, like I say, are passing in front of the sun lovely, uh, getting some nice breaks. And the settings that I've got are at its max, uh, at the moment, 12,800 ISO. Um, I've got my shutter speed on um, 1 1,250th of a second. And I think that's going to provide a nice exposure for it to be able to catch the uh, space station passing the sun from this direction, from this direction north, uh, that way, I believe. Now, we've got some nice sunspots i'm not sure if you can see and just about to see them we've got some nice sunspots here on the sun for reference and uh yeah already i'm waiting now uh just a, a bit of a, a tip it depends obviously what camera system you're using but i've got with this fuji xt5 I've, on the app the ability for to use a remote shutter with the with me with me uh with me camp with me smartphone and what that does is instead of me holding the, and pressing loads of uh, capture, getting loads of exposures by pressing down, which can in turn cause camera shake, which will be magnified massively by the the telescope. And there's the sun coming out. Oh god, yeah, the clouds are parting just just in time. So what I'm doing is I'm preventing camera shake uh, by using the remote shutter on my uh, smartphone which will activate the camera and take a ton of exposures for me without compromising the image now just another another tip again depending on what system you're using what uh, sd cards you're using i'm taking jpegs i'm not going to be taking raw images because it'll lead up too much data on the camera it'll slow things down whereas a jpeg I can get tons and tons and tons of photos, get lots of pictures of the space station, hopefully, and um, it'll not kind of slow down the 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 uh, camera at all. Okay, so it's literally about a minute to go. So here we go, guys. Here we go. I'm gonna uh, see what we'll get. Okay. Okay, a few seconds to go. Right guys, keep I'm keep checking the the, the, cl the clock time on on the laptop and uh, it's still perfectly focused on the sun. The sun's came out lovely. Okay, I've got 10 seconds to go, so I'm gonna activate the shutter now. Right. Now. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Yeah. Right, let's have a look, see what it goes. Moment of truth, guys. Moment of truth. Oh, come on, come on, come on, come on. Oh, nerve wracking this. Yes! Yes, I can. <laughs> ah, yes, get in. <laughs> oh my god. I got it. I got two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh, I got twelve exposures at the space station yeah have a look yes okay guys uh here we go this is what i got okay. left do not be traveling towards the right oh look there we go that's it get in get in get in get in oh man awesome couldn't have gone better okay guys i hope that gave you some insight into the planning that goes into taking such an image of the space station flying by you can go on a brilliant website called iss transit finder it'll calculate your own location and it'll give you any 
passes at the space station in front of the sun or the moon and if you've got a telescope or a, a long uh, a good zoom lens for your camera you might be able to to get similar images or better images the ones that i've gotten there I'm, I'm pretty chuffed with to be honest uh it'll look i'm hoping it looks great when i put it through the uh, through the computer um but yeah i hope i've gave you some decent tips as well obviously if you're going to try anything with the sun make sure you've got the proper solar filters and everything you don't want to be chancing anything and yeah iss transit finder and um the atomic clock on google that's a, a great a great resource to use and as always guys thanks very much for tuning in if you've got any questions or anything about what i've just shown you give a message hopefully like the video um subscribe if you can but yeah thanks very much cheers guys bye